I'm Troy Kirby with my Edmonds News with a quick look at the 2021 Washington State Legislative Session. The House Finance Committee heard public testimony on a gross substitute Senate Bill 5096, which would create a state capital gains tax. The bill passed the Senate 2524 on March 6th and would have to pass the House in order to make it to the governor's office for his signature to become I stand before you today as a proud community member and a startup business owner to say that the capital gains tax being proposed here penalizes startups at an outsized rate. As you may know, startup founders and employees take stock and shares as compensation during the formative years of a startup. This is critical incentive to attract talent and fuel the engine of our state's economic growth. Our research shows that in Washington, more so than in any other state, the higher your income, the lower your tax rate. The top 1% pay an effective rate of only about 3%, while middle-income families pay rates three to four times that, and low-income families pay nearly six times that rate. And not only is Washington's tax system driving a wedge between the rich and the rest, it's also widening the racial wealth gap. Thank you, members of the committee. I'm here today on behalf of Washington's startup ecosystem, as 80% of our members have 20 employees or fewer. Shares and stock options are used as primary compensation strategy in way to incentivize early stage employees to take the risk of working for a startup. Adding an additional and uncompetitive tax to these gains penalizes these employees and encourages founders to form their companies in or relocate to other states. This tax comes at a time when startup employees have newfound and persistent ability to work from anywhere. And we are concerned our startup ecosystem is at risk. We pulled startups in our membership to better understand this dynamic. 19% surveyed have eliminated their headquarters since the beginning of the pandemic. 32% are evaluating whether to relocate their headquarters and over 10% are already looking outside of Washington. And yet our upside down tax code has meant that we starve some communities of these resources and amenities that my clients value so much. It doesn't have to be this way. Our state is home to some of the world's richest people and most profitable companies. Washington has so many resources, enough that every community, every person, regardless of what zip code they live in or the color of their skin, should be able to have what they need to thrive. We can tell you after having researched this topic for over a decade, there is not a single state in the country with an excise tax on capital gains. That's because capital gains are not sold. They are the income from a sale. And this is why the IRS and every state in the country makes it clear that the capital gains tax is an income tax. There's been much discussion in this body on whether a levy on capital gains constitutes an income tax. In reality, there's simply no debate. In 2018, I asked the IRS about the treatment of capital gains and whether it is considered an excise or an income tax. Their answer was clear and concise, quote, it is an income tax. More specifically, capital gains are treated as income under the tax code and taxed as such. In arguing that a modest capital gains tax would hurt Washington's startup ecosystem, the WTA either does not understand how capital markets work or they hope you don't. They claim the tax would shrink available capital and move it out of state, but the bulk of the capital funding Washington startups actually comes from out-of-state investors who would not be subject to the tax, whereas local investors would be, regardless of where they put their money. Residence AI is a Seattle-based startup that employs 13 people in Washington. I also serve on the boards of two organizations to promote empowerment of women and girls. I am here today to testify in opposition to Senate Bill 5096 and the creation of a capital gains tax, which would really severely hurt our startup employees and our broader startup ecosystem. Um, this pandemic has demonstrated how absolutely vital childcare is to the foundation of our functioning economy. Uh, but without help, too many of our essential businesses are never going to recover from this. When the first state home order was implemented, I was cut down to 50% of my total enrollment. I've struggled to rebound from that and I'm currently operating with 20% of my enrollment open. As a lifelong citizen of Washington State, I'm here today to remind the committee that you represent the citizens of Washington. And we, the citizens, have already voted 10 times to not have an income tax. But what's undeniable is even people that grew up like me all over the place, my friends, my family, are realizing something that all of us really know deep down, that income and wealth inequality is the biggest 
problem that we're facing today. And we think about all the problems with mental health, all the problems with homelessness, all the problems with education, all the problems with access to medical care. It's really centered on this unequal amount of resources we have. Thank you for watching the Daily Legislative Report by My Edmonds News, covering the 2021 legislative session.